Hey friends, it's Mrs. Anna from Anchored at Salem Cove. I hope you all are having an awesome week. Uh, today we are going to talk about how Jesus' power takes action. And by that, I mean action on our part. So to get started though, we are going to stop and we're going to talk about our God sightings. How did you see God at work this last week? For me, I got to experience great joy in chatting with good friends from college over Zoom. Probably you all know what a Zoom meeting is now. Um, and also my family and I, we got to get outside and enjoy some nicer weather, going on some hikes and stuff. So I want you to give everybody in the room a chance to share God sightings from this week. And then while you're paused, grab a sheet of paper and a pen and a Bible if you want to follow along. Those are all the items we're going to need today. So a piece of paper, pen, a Bible if you want to read along, um, and pause and share about how you saw God at work this week. Well, thank you so much for sharing your God sightings. I love to hear how God is working, and I love to explore God's Word with you. So we are going to be in the book of John this week uh, from our Bible story. So book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. You can read it later if you want, or you can pause the video and look it up right now. John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. So the story starts in Jerusalem, near a place called the Pool of Bethesda. This pool had hundreds of sick people lying nearby, laying nearby. They were waiting for healing. Why don't you go ahead and lie down? Everybody, lie down on the floor. I'll wait. All right, everyone comfy, you're laying down the floor. Imagine yourself next to the pool of Bethesda because you have to lie just like that now while I tell you what happened in our Bible story. So the people lying by the pool weren't so comfy actually because they were all sick. The Bible says that some were blind and some couldn't walk and some were paralyzed. And being paralyzed means that you can't use your arms, your legs, sometimes your neck um, or your head. You can't move. So while they were lying near the pool there, this particular pool, they believed that every so often an angel would come and an angel of the Lord would come and it would stir up the water. And the first one to get to the pool and get into the water, they believed, would experience healing. So the water would swirl up and the first person to get in there would be healed. So they laid there and waited and waited and waited. Now I want you to do something while you're lying on the floor. Do jumping jacks while you wait without moving your arms or legs. Frustrating, huh? Could you imagine just laying there waiting, not able to move or do anything? So one day Jesus was walking by this pool and he saw a man laying there. And Jesus knew that this man had been sick for 38 years. He couldn't walk. And Jesus asked the man, would you like to get well? And the man answered, I can't, sir, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone always gets there ahead of me. Hmm. The man said, I can't. You know, I seem to hear myself saying the words, I can't, a lot lately, too. With this coronavirus situation, I can't do a lot of things that I, use, that I like to do or I'm used to doing. I can't go to church. I can't go to Wednesday night anchor program with all of you. Um, there are a lot of things that we can't do right now. So I want 
want you to think about some things that you can't do during the, this virus situation. So quick, everybody in the room, call out things you can't do during this difficult time. Oh, wait. You don't need to pause the video because you can't move. You're lying down on the ground. So just pause and yell out things you can't do. I'll wait. Thanks for sharing. Yep, we all seem to be limited by what we can't do right now. But let's get back to the Bible story. Here's the man lying near the pool with nobody to help him get in the water. You try it without moving. Go to the kitchen sink and wash your hands. then all your troubles will be over. Can you do it? <laughs> of course not, you can't move. Think of how frustrating that would have been for this man who just wanted to get in the pool and yet he couldn't. 38 years he laid there. Then along comes Jesus asking the man if he wants to be healed. And instead of saying, yes, the man says, I can't. Thankfully, Jesus didn't leave it at that. He said, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. Quick, jump up. The man rolled up his sleeping mat and began to walk. Do you see what happened? Jesus healed him, but he had to take action too. So now you can walk too. Go ahead, march in place. In a second, walk around the room and talk about the things that you can do during this difficult time. For me, I can still call my friends. I can still go outside and take a walk. Pause the video and then walk and talk about things you still can do during this time. I bet you came up with some great ideas. Way to go! Sometimes it's easy to make excuses about what Jesus wants us to do. You might think you're too shy or you're too young, but Jesus calls us to take action. And with his power and help, there are plenty of ways that we can take action right now. And just like we're learning today, Jesus' power takes action. So let's talk about that for a minute. What might Jesus be calling your family to do for other people right now? How can you take action instead of saying, I can't? Grab your paper and your pen or pencil or marker, whatever you grabbed in the beginning, and have somebody take notes while you make a plan. Maybe you could make an encouraging sign to hang in your front window. Or maybe you could use chalk to write some fun and encouraging notes for people walking past your house. Or maybe you could leave notes for your neighbors. Or maybe you could go stand outside a window of a nursing home and wave hi and sing some songs or do something fun. I'm sure you'll come up with some great ideas, so pause the video while you make a plan. Thanks for those creative ideas. Way to go. Jesus' power takes action. And now, that you've come up with a plan to take action and change those I can't into I can's, let's see another way that we can turn our I can't into our I can's. 
All right, so we are gonna try to balance on one foot. So everybody see how long you can balance on one foot while looking around the room. Don't stop turning your head. Okay, ready? All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm on my foot, I'm gonna turn it, I'm looking. <laughs> Turn your head. Whoop. That was super hard. That made me feel like I can't balance very well. But let me show you a little sciencey fun trick to balance better. So you need to pick something at your eye level. So I'm going to pick the windowsill right in front of me. And I'm going to focus on the windowsill while I'm balancing. But here's a new thing to add to it. Focusing on the item in front of you, take your finger and your thumb and pinch your earlobe, which, you know, is the bottom of your ear right there. Okay, so try to balance while focusing on your item and pinching your earlobe. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. that fun little trick. I'm not even wobbling at all. That is so cool. We are going to continue to remember that Jesus' power takes action. We can always turn to Jesus to help when we are feeling like we have an I can't attitude. His power will help us take action and encourage each other to stay positive and do good things for him. And those good things can start right now in your own family. Let's close today by thinking of ways your family has taken action for each other. Maybe you've helped your mom make dinner. Maybe you've helped uh, your, maybe your older brother or sister has helped you with your home. Um, go around your family and each person say at least one way a family member has helped them take action recently. Pause the video and thank God for each other's actions. Well, I am so glad that Jesus' power takes action and that Jesus is always here to help us. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for you're loving us and helping us take action for you. Please be with our family during this difficult time. Please be with every person suffering from the virus right now. Thank you for never leaving us. We love you. In your name, amen. Well, as we wrap up this morning or this evening or whenever you're watching this video, I want to remind you that there is a link in the profile below to a YouTube video for you to go and spend some time worshiping the Lord. Also, don't forget to pull out your thankfulness journal and write or journal about or draw a picture of um, something to remind you to turn your I can't attitude into I can attitudes and that Jesus' power takes action. Don't forget to date it so you can look back at your journal someday and know what you were thinking on this day. Hope you all are well. Love you, miss you. Take care.